Hey guys, welcome to question MM239 of the Maths Methods Fortify Study Guide. Now we've got this function f of x equals x to the power of log e of x over 2. Uh, we've got the graph and our first part ai is a two mark question and it's asking us to find the derivative function f dash of x. Awesome. So, um, first things first is we do have our calculator in this question so we can actually just use uh, our calculator to find this. Uh, but because this is a two mark question, if you just put it in your calculator and write the answer, you're only going to get the one mark. So let's go through how to actually work this out because you probably, you might not have even seen a question like this before. So it is actually quite difficult. So first things first is to uh, recognize what kind of rule we're going to have to use to differentiate this, right? So we've got x to the power of something and that something is a function, right? So we end up with... Um, x to the power of, so, okay, sorry, let me rewrite that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say let y equal uh, x to the power of u over a half, oh, sorry, over 2, uh, where u is equal to log e of x. Right? All good. Um, and the way that we figure out our derivative is dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx which is our regular chain rule. The only problem is this function here, y equals x to the power of u over two, is not only in terms of u, it's in terms of x as well. So we don't actually want this x here, we want only, only u, right? So we actually need to find x in terms of u to replace this with something so that we can actually um, derive it. So what happens is we get, um, uh, we take this, and we rearrange it to get e to the power of u is equal to x, just by our regular rearrangement, which means that x is equal to e to the power of u, so we can actually replace this u, sorry, this x, with e to the power of u. Okay, so from here we can say that y is equal to e to the power of u to the power of u over two, which means we get uh, e to the power of u squared over two. Awesome. So now that our y is in terms of u only, we're going to be able to work out dy du. So that's all good. Uh, in terms of the derivative of e to the power of u squared, we simply get, because um, this is kind of like its own chain rule within this now. So we can say that the derivative of this is equal to the derivative of the function inside it, which is 2u, multiplied by the uh, original, right? So uh, the derivative of the, the outside, which is uh, e to the u squared, right? Um, and then we get that times one half, right? Because we've got this two on the bottom. And then we multiply that by the derivative of uh, u, which is one on x. Cool. Uh, then what we get is, as we go along, we get, uh, we can replace u with log e of x, so we get 2 log e of x times e to the power of log e of x squared all over 2x. Awesome. Uh, and by the way guys, our first mark comes up here somewhere. Uh, this 2 can be uh, cancelled out, and so we end up getting f dash of x is equal to log e of x times e to the power of log e of x squared all over x. And that's our second and final mark for this part. I know this was really weird. Um, so have a bit of a play around with, with this part here, um, and especially this bit, because I know this can be a bit weird. So um, that's it for part AI. Let's move on to part uh, AII, where we've got a one mark question now. So the question asks us, oops. Awesome. So the question says the gradient of y equals f of x, or find the gradient of y equals f of x at x equals 2, correct to do it two decimal places. Awesome. So we're just going to leave that derivative down there because we're going to need to use that. So if we're searching for the gradient of f of x at x equals 2, what we're really searching for is f dash of 2, right? So what we end up getting is log e of 2. So we're just copying this equation down here, but just subbing in 2 for our x. Log e of 2 squared all over two. Awesome. Uh, and where we go from here is we simply just put this into our CAS and we get 
f dash of two is equal to 0 0.56. That's our first and only mark for this question and our final answer. Uh, so that's it. Let's move on to part B. Part B is a two mark question. And what we get, oops, part B, two marks. Cool, and what we get given is, the tangent y equals t of x at x equals k passes through the origin. Find the value of k correct to three decimal places. Awesome, so we know that a tangent to this graph passes through the origin, which means it passes through this point here, which means that we're gonna come something like this, where this is at x equals k. And this is at our origin, zero, zero. So, what are we gonna do? So firstly, we need to um, recognize that the tangent uh, has the same gradient as the original function at the point x equals k, uh, and it also has a gradient of rise over run from here to here. So whenever we come across these questions, guys, you really want to uh, make the equivalent gradient from the rise over run, so the gradient between two points, equal to the instantaneous gradient of the function at that point. So what I mean by that is the gradient of this original at x equals k is equal to f dash of k, right? So we take this function and we simply sub in our k, oops, our k for our x values, right? So log e of k times e to the power of log e of k squared all over k. Sweet. So this is our gradient at this point of this tangent. But this is also, as in this, this line also has a gradient between these two points, which means that we can actually find our gradient in the regular way, rise over run, which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, but we we need to actually find the value of this point so that we can find that. So we already know that this is zero, zero. We know that this is x equals k, but we don't know our y value. Uh, but we can easily find that by just subbing in k into our function, which means that our y value is gonna be k, oops, k to the power of log e of k over two. Sweet, so now that we've got two um, coordinates, we can equate the gradient of this to the instantaneous gradient, which means we get um, y2 minus y1, so k to the, to the power of log e of k over two minus zero over k minus zero. Sweet. So what that means is this gradient is equal to this gradient, right? Gradient between these two points equals the, grad the instantaneous gradient at that point, which means that log e of k times e to the power of log e of k squared over k is equal to this, which means k to the power of log e of k uh, over two over k, right? So these two things equal each other. So all we need to do now is solve in CAS and say that k is equal to uh, 1.649. So three decimal places. So the question asks us for three decimal places. Uh, your first mark comes somewhere around here, so recognizing these two gradients, and then your second mark comes when you equate those gradients and let and find that k is equal to 1.649, second mark here, and that's it for part B. Uh, so let's move on to part C. Part C is simply a one mark question, which asks us to find the equation of the tangent, or the rule, for the function t of x, giving any values correct to three decimal places. Awesome. So, uh, what we're going to deal with is our tangent equation, right? So, our y2, so for a tangent, which is t of x, uh, y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. So, we simply need our gradient of the tangent as well as a point on that tangent. So, um, let's deal with our gradient first. So, we know that our gradient, uh, according to our previous question, is equal to k log e of k over two, and it was this whole thing over k, which means that we can just have that k there. Sweet. Uh, according to our pre uh, previous part, we found out that k was equal to 1.649. Uh, 
So k equals 1.649, which means that m, our gradient, is 1.649 to the power of log e of 1.649 over 2 times 1.649. Sweet. Uh, and what this gives us is 0 0.389. So we know that our gradient is this. Now, we just need a point on this graph so that we can sub it into our tangent equation. Uh, we know that our point lies at um, k, k log e, oops, k, k to the power of log e of k over 2. Uh, and we know that, again, our value, is, our value of k is 1.649. So our point is 1.649. 1.649 to the power of log e of 1.649 over uh, 2. Awesome. Which gives us 1.649, 0 0.642. Fantastic. Now, from here, we know that our tangent, oops, tangent t of x is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 we know our m value, we know our point, so we can sub those in now. So we get y minus y1, which is 0 0.642, equals our m value, which was 0 0.389, outside of x minus 1.649, and what we end up getting is y equals 0 0.389x. Uh, now, we didn't actually have to use the, this point because we can already see here that the y-intercept is zero, but I just wanted to take you through that whole process to show you that. So, therefore, t of x is equal to 0 0.389x, which is our one mark. Awesome. So, that's it for part C. Let's move on to part D. So, part D is a three-mark question. Um, so, a little bit long, but let's go for it. So, we've got this point P, P, F of P. Uh, which lies on the graph of f such that the distance from the origin o to the point p is at a minimum. So p is on this graph somewhere and we've got this line that makes the uh, segment op uh, and it's the shortest it can possible be, so possibly b, so the minimum. Uh, we need to find the coordinates of point p correct to three decimal places. Awesome, so first things first is before we can even work out the distance between these, we're gonna have to work out the uh, coordinate, or the, I mean, the coordinates in terms of p of this point p. So a coordinate, as we know, is p f of p. Um, but we know that the uh, function f of x is this, which means that f of p gives us this value here with p instead of x. So p to the power of log e of p over 2. So this is our coordinate in terms of p. Uh, now what we're going to do is come up with an equation for our distance, right? Because if we want to find the minimum distance, we're going to need to first find a function for the actual distance itself. So our distance formula is x2 minus or square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. P f of p is going to be our first um, coordinate. So our first x value is p minus uh, zero. So we know that there's a zero zero as well. Minus zero squared plus y2, which is p to the power of log e of p over 2 minus first y value, which is 0 squared. Awesome. Um, we can pretty much just leave that how it is, essentially. Um, actually, let's just maybe just expand it out a little bit. So p takes 0 squared is just p squared. Uh, and then this whole thing squared, I'm just going to leave as p to the log e of p on 2 squared. There's no real need to simplify that any further. So this is our distance formula. And we know that we're looking for the minimum distance, which means the derivative of our distance formula is going to equal zero. So d, d, dp is going to equal zero, right? So the derivative of d with respect to p. Um, and all we're going to do is just solve this on our CAS. So we don't want to do this by hand. Uh, that's going to be a massive pain. So we'll go d, d, dp is equal to uh, according to our CAS, is log e of p times e to the power of 2 log e of p squared plus 2p squared over p uh, e to the power of 2 log e of 
p squared plus 4p squared. So, <laughs> you can understand why we would not do this by hand. Um, but this is our derivative, and that's our first mark right there, finding that derivative. Secondly, we know that, like I said, the derivative has to equal 0, because there's a stationary point at the minimum length. Right, so that means that, um, I'm not going to write that, that out again, but d, 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 p is equal to 0. Uh, we would solve this in our CAS, and therefore, p is equal to 0 0.618. So we put solve, this equals 0, therefore p equals that. This is our second mark, finding out what that p value is. But we haven't finished the question because what we're looking for is the coordinates of this point. So we want the x value and the y value, right? So to get the y value, we simply sub it back into f of x, which is f of 0 0.61, oops, 6, 618, which is equal to 0 0.618 to the power of log e of 0 0.618 all over 2. What this gives us is 0 0.630, which means that p occurs at 0 0.618, 0 0.630. Awesome. Now, if you do not have this answer in the back of your book, um, if you had something like 0 0.771, uh, 1.070, please ignore that answer. Um, it was an error, uh, and I've fixed it up now, and this is, this is the correct answer. So don't stress if you had that wrong answer. So this is your third mark uh, for part D. This is our final answer. Uh, you know, correct to three decimal places, that's all good. So that's it, let's move on to part E. Now, part EI uh, tells us that the graph of g of x equals negative x to the power of log e of x over two plus two is drawn on the same axes as shown below. So we get this graph with this bit of shaded area in between. Points A and B are the points of intersection between y equals f of x and y equals g of x. Find the x values of points A and B. Awesome. So guys, if you had in your um, question g of x equals negative x times log e of x, um, that was actually a typo on our part uh, and an error. So if you were having trouble with this question and getting the right answer, try going back and using g of x equals negative x to the power of log e of x. Um, that was just a, li a little thing that we made a mistake with. So uh, yep, we've, we've fixed that now. Um, but if yours says it, then we can you can just do it like this. So, if we need to find the coordinates of the points of, in or the x values of the points of intersection, what that means is we're going to need to equate our, um, our equations, right? So, we know that 1 is x to the power of log e of x on 2, and the other is negative x to the power of log e of x over 2 plus 2. Uh, awesome. So this is basically our first mark. So recognizing that we have to let these equal each other is our first mark. Uh, and then our second, we get, um, let's multiply both sides by two. So we get x to the power of log e of x equals negative x to the power of log e of x plus four. Then two x to the log e of x equals four. Dividing both sides by 2, we get x to the power of log e of x equals 2. Uh, and then we can solve in our CAS from here. So according to CAS, uh, x is equal to e to the negative square root of log e of 2. And x equals e to the power of square root of log e of 2. Awesome. Uh, sweet. Which means that our coordinate or our x values. So our x value for a is equal to e to the power of negative root log e of two. Our b value is e to the power of square root log e of two. Fantastic. So this is our second mark, uh, and that's it for part e i. Uh, and let's move on to part e i i, which is a one mark question. So pretty quick, um, E I I, one mark, and it asks us to find the area of the shaded region bound by the graph uh, of y equals f of x and y equals g of x. So these two points here, right? So we know our x values here. We know our top and bottom functions, which means that we can now work out our area between these two. 
So the area between two graphs is equal to from A to B of the top minus the bottom, right? So our top graph in this case is going to be G of X because that's on the top there. So G of X minus the bottom function, which is F of X dx. So our, our first x value is our a value there. So e to the negative root log e of 2 to e to the power of root log e of 2, where g of x is equal to this bit here. So negative x to the power of log e of x over 2 plus 2 minus uh, x to the power of log e of x over 2 which is our uh, f of x value. dx on the end, don't forget that, uh, which means that our area is equal to, correct to three decimal places, 1.276 units squared. Awesome. Uh, and that's it. So, um, yeah, that's it for part EII. Uh, and that wraps up 239. Uh, guys, if you have any questions about any of that, please hit me up in the comments below. Uh, but otherwise, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video.